Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's macro measure. It's about 10 minutes to noon here on the East Coast. It's Sunday, November 5th, 2023. I'm Wayne, and this one is going to be much different than most of the others we've done because I am having uh, a really serious think or swim issue. And think or swim is apparently under maintenance. So not only are my various layouts not available to me, but it's very glitchy and um, the connection continues to go down even the ba on basic charts without my layout. So trusty disclaimer being flashed, trusty intellectual property rights notice. And then I'm going to sort of do this abbreviated video uh, for that reason mainly and others uh, just very pressed for time as a result of this, been playing around with it for too long, expecting it to eventually self-correct but it's not here is this week and last week's stream and so i'm going to spend uh, some time on this and then i'll move it off and we'll go through some basics but uh, unfortunately i won't have my normal charts all the setups which is super frustrating but again i don't even know when this will be corrected so at least for my account and uh i can't get to those as of now and like i said there's a real real problem with think or swim kind of glitching and going down and then coming back up again. So the ma major delays. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave this up because I got a comment in the uh, Rebel Pit this week in chat that uh, maybe last week's video, It's that, that's what I took away from the comment, that maybe I sounded really bearish. And I have to say that I'm sorry if that's what you came away with. I tried to make a lot of points on the, on the summary. Oops up in here let me see if my cursor showing yeah up in here i've moved a lot of those to the review and summary naturally since the week has passed but i tried to include a lot of those to say that right under and i think this was the, the one that was key for me was the market market rife with signs that precede relief rallies so that was the case but what we had to note was that initially it was very over uh very oversold bombed out in the short run didn't know what would happen with those big symbols, right, that we've been watching for some time, really much of the year. Um, and we said, my, my comment was, I'd be surprised if the VIX couldn't do a little more than get through the mid-20s, right? That would surprise me. Usually by the time sort of a really heavy selling phase is over, you do get some kind of a pop to at least near 30. Didn't really happen. Um, so that was a little bit of, little surprising, but uh, I think, you know, the way that the, the way that the Fed played out and the squeezing that went on. Um, and I do also think there there were some shenanigans that were played. In fact, I think there were a lot of shenanigans that were played uh, by the Treasury and by the government on a few different things. We had a massive uh, jump in the debt by a trillion dollars because they had to they had they got, I guess, called out on some accounting gimmicks. Um, and then something happened uh, with manipulation in the bond market. Uh, I'm pretty certain of that, but um, I can't ex say exactly what. It just had a very strange uh, suddenness to it, um, to me. And I kind of feel like there was that that needed to happen uh, to help stocks. And uh, I think it came in just in the nick of time, you know, kind of like we, we note here in the outcome where uh, we said that, if the market wasn't able to rally and we really had a, had another kind of intensification of the selling that that would damage the technicals and what instead what happened was they really were able to save october i think technically with the last two days which were monday and tuesday of the of the past week and that really i think would have helped prevent further technical fallout that could have really been a problem technically but uh, for some months, but that was averted really right just in the nick of time. And so I do think this was part of something, but the thing I wouldn't act like, I wouldn't act as if we are victims, right? Because we knew, we knew just based on all the signs that were in place, that something like this could happen. And you just don't know, you don't know what's going to happen with uh, the macro. You don't know what's going to happen with geopolitical. Uh, you don't know exactly what the Fed will do, what they'll say. Uh, you can be right a lot of the times and maybe a different phrasing can really upend things. So you've got to treat it the the, the way you have to treat it, you know, which I think is just as prudently as possible. But um, we did mention that one should prepare for a squeeze relief rally mentally 
Um, we did say that even if there's going to be more downside, that the gang would probably want to offload a lot of that inventory before they allow the market to drop again. So these are a lot of the things I mentioned, sort of not really hinting, but just noting, right, that we couldn't, as bad as things had been, and I think a lot of the bull case, um, you know, this year has been undercut. Uh, rates have stayed, gone higher and stayed higher for longer to this point. Um, I think the third quarter GDP is a complete gimmick mirage that'll be, uh, a lot of that they pulled, tried to pull forward, I think, and that'll hurt, I think, the fourth quarter GDP. I think it's overstated anyway. I think that they're using inflation uh, as a positive uh, to goose the GDP, even though they call it real GDP. Uh, I don't really think it is. I think it's it's a lot of a lot of uh, statistical massaging and different things like that. And it's not like this is anything new. It's been going on. But I think, as I always say these days, I think it just gets worse and worse every year where every new administration comes in and becomes more egregious with uh, with the sleight of hand. Well, what can you do, though? But to me, you're not a serious people. You're not a serious country. You're not a serious uh, you're not a serious commentator. You're not a serious um, investment advisor. If you're bandying all this about with any without any sort of skepticism. Um, if you're going to sit there and run with it, then you're, you know, you're just another person talking their book, which I would say, unfortunately, is the overwhelming majority of people that just don't want to look at things with uh, anything but with the rosiest of lenses, because that helps them uh, ultimately their bottom line. We did say expect volatility to remain in place. We did note that we could see signs of bottoming soon. Um, but you'd have to stick with your DDA because we did not know what was coming our way for sure. We never do. And then we said that um, we're not we weren't sure if the gang could could pull it off. Right. That was the that was the question mark. Could the gang pull it off yet again to get us back on the third year script, which is tracked very well. And uh, we did note, though, what could help them was that they had the wall of worry in place. And um, once the selling dried up, given how much uh, damage investor sentiment suffered as well uh, as per the AAII that we covered that you know, th there was there was enough there I think for bulls to, to do what they did so like that, that's where you really can't be surprised right you really I don't think you should be surprised at what happened maybe the extent of it the degree of it maybe the nature of it the relentless nature of it could surprise you uh, maybe that kind of stuff. But I mean, the fact that they tried to do this, I don't think what is, comes as a surprise. The fact that they pulled it off doesn't come as a surprise, really. But I did say for you know, for the second week in a row to keep your rolling discipline knob at 11 if the heavy selling persisted, because that's just another way of saying that, look, you're so late into the selling game that you can't overstay your welcome if you're playing puts, right? That's basically what that c conveys. So we did note that you could see the squaring up in front of the FOMC. I think you saw more than squaring up. You know, you saw a lot of covering that then flipped immediately over to squeeze. And we did say, right, they would take whatever they could. If they could seize upon some language change, they would. And that would be the big talk. So the outcome was we got the instant levitation on Monday, like we've seen. Again, no Friday memories. It was more of lack of war escalation is, is a wonderful thing by stocks. Right, is about as uh, I don't know, silly, stupid, and uh, you could say um, bankable <laughs> as it gets these days. But that's the truth. It is. It's been very bankable uh, to play the game that way. Um, I do think, as I alluded to, that I do think there were some heavy shenanigans, but you can't really get shocked at that because of the market being predisposed to something like we saw last week due to the conditions that were in place. Again, I don't market rife with signs that precede relief rallies. I, I thought that was pretty, kind of a pretty clear statement. Let's just put it that way. Cause I'm not really, I just want to make sure that I come across the right way. I'm not, you, you know, the people aren't, aren't leaving the, this video and getting the sense of, um, you know, uber bullishness or impending doom. You know, that's not what I'm trying to, to do here. I'm trying to, I always strive to be objective about the market. I don't think it helps you not to be. I think you're better off just using the market on all these different technical tools to create this view that you've got. And sometimes that's a stronger view than others. 
you know, and sometimes it's, it's not, and sometimes it's contingent on things, but the bottom line was that all the big three, right. The dollar yields, the VIX were all clobbered midweek onwards. And that just, of course, was part of and helped to exacerbate the super squeeze. Um, one, one or two reasons, maybe three or four was that the end of the tax loss selling, uh, was ending at the end of Oct. The hedge funds were at the shortest positioning wise that they'd been in 11 years. Sentiment had gotten uh, absolutely rocked. I do think there was bond market intervention. The relentless bid was indicative of short squeezes. And the other thing you could think of is, right, that they get an early start on saving your bonus. Also, you could think of uh, that buybacks will now become part of the mix all over again. Uh, so we, you'll have a bunch of um, a, a bunch of clown operators uh, now that their stocks have been jammed back up, loading up on that, and shareholders apparently cheering it on because nothing's better than buying stocks at elevated valuations, and as, as according to some shareholders that love that. But hey, it works, so it's kind of like a, a game that works. I personally think there should be better use for a company's capital than buying their own stock back at. Uh, at uh, very high valuations, but you have to remember that keeps the EPS uh, beats um, going strong, right? If you have, uh, you're getting those earnings, but you're getting, d d doing the math with fewer shares outstanding or fewer shares as part of the float, you are, uh, you're, you're actually doing better to keep these, the mirage going, right? And to me, like it's been about a mirage now for uh, a great deal of it has been about mirages at times over the last 30 years. It's just, but it is what it is. Maybe it's always been that way. Anyway, the October ending prevented further fall. We talked about that. Um, the third year is possibly back on track. So the cycle we're in, right, argues that we should see stabilization mainly in November with a little bit of a, a bullish bias. And then December should be wildly bullish. So, um, if that's the case, even though you have a problem with things, I would really suggest that you go take a look at 2019 and 2021 as to what can happen. And the message there is if they do pull this off and you think like a lot of people do, the things are really still unraveling in the wrong direction under the surface of the equity market. Then my answer would be, but if you want to profit from it, you should still trade the long side, right? Remember, we're trading with options, which is, I think, smart. We're also being very smart, I think, about position management in terms of rolling up, right? So every time you have a, a nice score and you still like what you're in, put a nice roll together. Be smart about your roll. So that's what I would suggest. So in terms of uh, the current tabs check, it's going to be very minimal because I've gotten completely upended by thinkorswim. And this was really all supposed to be about the charts. And it's going to be hard to do the type of charting that I wanted with I have no uh, I have no templates. So it is what it is. So we're just going to have to deal with it for now. Um, I'm not sure what happened there that why that extra line got taken in there. I thought I know I took that one line out there about Apple and FOMC. So my apologies. I might have had a, my own, might have lost track of something on my own there. That's a little frustrating, but uh, it may have happened there. Pa apologies for that. Yeah, this assessment didn't, somehow the assessments have gotten switched up. Something got, some kind of a cut and paste got messed up and I didn't even realize it. Well, sorry about that. So anyway, the current assessment is, and we'll show this on the charts, really, it's about the, that they made this super vertical. This is really it right here. That I, of course, like you're not in danger really of cracking in a big way at this point, right? Sure, something could bring that about quickly, but the verticalness of what we just saw, the prior failures, and many other issues would still keep me at a DEFCON three because I don't think you're out of the woods. Um, so let's do that because this other part of the assessment is missing. The real assessment's missing. And I'll, I'll discuss the bottom line in a moment. So let's switch out to the chart finally, which will be a, a slightly different uh, slightly different chart. Let me just see if I can escape from here. Nope, there it goes. Bring this over to here. And then if I can get, I need to get, um, let's see screen number four going. So the tabs check I was going to do should be right here. 
And all I really wanted to show is just how much we chart these usually every week. And we did say, right, that this last week, that things were getting pretty low with the percent of stocks above the 20, 50, 200. They were getting down there. You couldn't really say they were the worst they've been, but they were certainly within a range where we've seen many rallies develop. That was part of the whole market bombed out discussion. And you could see just how much, right, they jammed so many stocks in such a big way. Now, remember, the 20 is the most responsive of the three we discuss here. And so naturally, that trailed down with a lot of stocks. So that made it easy, really, for them to jump back over that. But you could see that this is not, I would say, uncommon, but it was really one of the largest moves in just three, I mean, sorry, in just four to five sessions that we've seen in a while. You do get it from time to time, but it is certainly, and that's obviously right, been like relief rally squeezes like we just saw. Naturally, if we go to MMFI for the percent of stocks above the 50, pretty powerful, right? But not nearly as powerful because the 50 doesn't trail down as quickly as the 20 as stocks were careening lower. And the same thing can really be seen here. You can see that this got down to a level where you can't really say that, no, there's no way there should be a rally. It's not on the super, super low. It's been worse. We said that last week, but it was close enough that I think you had to give it the credit for what it is. But that's just a brief tab tabs check on that. Because of what's happened here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. That's all I really wanted to cover on those. I want to switch now to a chart. I'm just going to use these charts unfortunately, because that's, that's all I have to work with at the moment, courtesy of Think or Swim. But what I think I'm going to try to cover here is I'll cover spiders and the big four like we typically do. Um, look, what I meant by verticalness, that's really what we just saw here. You could see just how vertical this became. You don't really rise very often for, for very long at a more rapid uh, rate of ascent, right? a more rapid um slope, if you will, uh, 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 upsloping uh, action. So it does happen at times. I don't, I wouldn't call this unprecedented. I don't think it's anywhere near unprecedented, but it was one of those really rapid, uh, really rapid rises. And depending on where you, I did have lines somewhere, but it looks like they may have been knocked off. I'll just add them back. But I think you stopped at this other line that I just added right there. It's not perfectly drawn, as you can see, but it gets you get the idea. So I think where it stopped actually makes sense, the, the way that I like to draw trend lines. And you still haven't taken out a high, right? So you have yet to take out a high despite all this, um, all this action. So you really, I mean, in my book, you really want to see at least one solid high get exceeded and held to really start feeling better about things. Uh, so I don't think you're out of the woods yet. Um, I think a step to, to do that would be to be able to close above the resistance line that I think we hit on Friday. And let me just try to fix that now that I'm playing around with it a little bit. Let me just get a little bit more drawn a little bit better. I would probably take the candle corner there and just come over like that to try to get a fit for all three. So that's about where I think you are. So that would be step number one is getting above and holding. And of course, taking out this high and holding would be step number two, getting above the 100, which is red here on this particular chart. Of course, that would be another positive thing. But really what you have to do, I think, is leave this behind. Like this is your real, this line here up here, that's the one that I think makes you really feel good. Like, okay, this is really out of the woods. We're above that. We're holding we're not overbought. You know, we don't get up there and, and we're on like an 80, 89 RSI reading on like the, you know, the four hour chart or something it, where it's ex, uh, extreme. Now, because my charts are missing in action somewhere, I can't tell you exactly where things are um, on RSI without spending a lot of time. And I don't want to do that, but I am going to switch over to just a 15 minute. I'm actually, I meant to do uh, a little bit longer. Let's do a one hour. Let's do the one hour. And you can see that if we go back towards the highs on the RSI, you were at, there you go, you were at 89. So I think in the short term, you are definitely stretched and overbought. And so I, I would say, right, you don't know what news is coming out, but, but I always try to say if we're just news neutral, 
on Monday morning, something that's really rare, but just assuming that I would think that there's a little bit of give back here. Do they close the gap here uh, before they go any further? Do they close this gap before they go any further? But this is really important. I think what we have to look for is, does this thing really just evaporate quickly, which, which is a possibility? I don't think that would happen now that the, the way that rates have been worked down. And just to kind of show that, let's look at TNX just as our proxy for that. And you can see that was that was a real drubbing, right? You This low took out a lot of action. It's on the brink of taking out more. And I do think there was some sort of yield curve manipulation going on here. This was, there was something that happened here. I don't, I haven't had the time to look into it. It's been to put it mildly, it's been a very rough weekend. It's only been exacerbated by the think or swim saga of uh, this morning. It should continue to drag on, but that is down big, right? You can't say it isn't even if you're a bear. It's down pretty big. It kind of stuns me that we hit 5.0 on the nose and suddenly, right, this happens. Um, but again, I've been around long enough not to be completely shocked by things like that. Uh, but it seems like someone drew a line in the sand that it wasn't going to, that yield was not going to be allowed to get above uh, 5% for now, at least. So that's the short term picture in SPY. I think you have to see if it just backs up a little bit. And then if they create like a little base camp, like as I call it, where you have a small little backup, much like this right here. And then they try to make a run at the high, much like they did, you know, here, they started working it back up. Notice they couldn't take out those highs and go, right? And so that becomes the lower high. And then the, the, the low getting taken out here becomes the, okay, here we go again, right? Another more downside action, just the way trends flip. So I think that's what you have to wait for to feel better about this. As I thought I just had, didn't I just have trend lines on here? I wonder why I'm getting... For some reason, I am not getting my, uh, it's not keeping my, it should be keeping my trend lines up there. And I'm, I may have, I may have brought up a, a template that I didn't mean to. Oh, well, okay. Um, let me try FT. No, no, let me try this. I have to get back to a better template here. If it lets me, I hope my trend lines appear over here. And they're not there. Okay. That's my fault. I'm just flipping around on without uh without my normal charts. And that's that's the price you pay <laughs> right there for not being able to access your your normal charts. So I'll let it stay there, but that's the big line anyway. So you get the idea. So this is again uh why you know I guess more people will be frustrated because there's nothing that I would say that's pounding the table ish yet. I think you have to still wait for more action to confirm what this could be or what this won't be. And so I think if you look at it, you could see that it really is very vertical. Uh, if we give it a little bit more uh, scale to work with um, this, remember all these rally attempts have been met with selling once they got to a certain point, whether it was underneath a set of moving averages where there was some confluence there that happened to be near a flat line. I would say, though, that this is back above that 432 level for now. And I think that and 408 were some of the levels and the 411, 412. Those are my three levels we've seen like have been big a lot this year. 408, uh, 411 and uh, 412, somewhere in there. And then that 431, 432 and SPY. But what you have to do, I think, beyond this is look out further and say, you know, what's going on here? And if you look further... Um, what I really see is the possibility, right? This is really not an ideal cup, but you kind of have this cup and handle-ish, something akin to that, right? A look like that. And so if they are able to jam this up and through, technically, that probably will bring a lot of people to the party, right? That So you that's, that's one technical reason why, even if you don't believe, you, you think there's a lot of... Uh, shenanigans being played in various ways you're you're in the you're in the same camp as as uh, greg and and ryan and myself um i none of us would trade it that way right like trading investing or you know they're two different things 
I really think you should go along with it. If, if even though it seems, how can this possibly happen? Because I've seen way too many people sit out these great money making up periods uh, in terms of opportunity, great, great opportunity, because they are not on board with the macro. But um, you know, remember, I've said it many times: the bulls will buy at the drop of a hat. It doesn't take anything more than a one mile per hour wind or breeze to get the bulls. Uh, ready to start buying. That's just the nature of what the market's become. Again, maybe it was always that way. I feel like it was turbocharged once Greenspan got in there. To me, well, ever since Greenspan got in there, there's been this new mentality of, you know, goose, 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 whenever possible. Um, and, you know, damn, damn the valuations, damn the consequences. So, uh, you know, that's still intact if you ask me. Um, and I wouldn't fight against this. I would embrace this if it starts to take off and go through. But remember, you've got to keep it within context. So if your daily RSI gets up to, uh, you know, 84 and we're, uh, we're we get above here very quickly and, and, and we're, uh, that, that's certainly a good development that you're taking out highs and all these other things. But I would be very cautious, right, about entering in a big way without a safety net or without super disciplined, you know, long side uh, discipline in terms of rolling, trimming, and uh, maybe getting out quickly because just from experience, right? That's what I, I just say, call it playing the probabilities because I've just seen it countless times that I can remember where when you start playing against 90 RSI on the hourly charts, you, you usually regret it the over, well, over, over, overwhelming majority of the time. You know, so yeah, that's why you've got to keep this stuff within context of where am I right now with a couple of different important views. And that could be hourly and daily for you. Other people, it could be a bigger, it could be, could be weekly and monthly because you're long-term oriented or it could be even shorter, right? It could be the 15 minute and the one hour are both ridiculous right now. That's it. That My ride is over or about to be over as soon as I see any slight hesitation and loss of momentum. So that's just the way that I would do I would do this or suggest that you do this. That's the way I do it. I I don't like to play games uh, because I don't have time. So when I see that when I actually have the time to see that something's extreme, I'm I I just DDA it and react. I just react to that DDA and it's over. And if it keeps going. I don't really have any regrets because I know that chances are if I tried to be ultra super patient and play against the odds. I would probably lose the overwhelming majority of the time, right? So it doesn't bother me because I'm just playing the probabilities. But you can't rule out this possible bullish uh, view that we just covered in terms of something akin to a cup and handle. Also note, right, that if you look at the rally from last October all the way through July, right, this they 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 despite everything, which again is this is the funny part to me despite everything, right when things are really set to fall apart there in a big way, I think, potentially, right? That's when this incredible rally kicks in. And that's what I mean by saved in the nick of time. But more importantly than all the shenanigans that have gone on, more importantly, and you can see there's a flat line there, right? This is what, if you want to know what a flat line is, if you're new to market rebellion, you're like, what are these guys talking about a flat line? This is really right near these lows or there's a flat line. It doesn't get much more clear, right? Look, if I do this right here, look at how many points on this chart. We bisect this consolidation. We catch these tops. We catch some closes, opens, lows, highs, lows. We, we're right near here. We're right, uh, we're right below there. We're, we're in the midst of all this little mini cluster. We're in the bottom of this little mini cluster. We're catching l some lows there. We're catching a low here. There's a lot of respect for that 410, like I've said, 410, 411, 412, a lot of respect for that level. So they there was it was respected yet again. Another reason why you shouldn't be surprised that they were able to at least start a relief rally attempt, a squeeze attempt. You just I don't think you can be surprised at that um, coming into last week. Anyway, um, with that being the case. I think if you zoom out and you say, well, wait a minute, these the bulls have managed to hold on to, despite everything, the, the, the rally that started last October, they've been able to hold on to this. 
most of the gains. So if I just, and I, I'm not going to go down to the penny here, but if we just look at the FIB, they exceeded the 38 now I, uh, percent retracement. I thought that next one down, would, they would get down to 404. So one reason why 404 to me was a big level and has been in the past and that we would add to add to it being a big level was because of this fib, right? So that didn't happen though. I thought it would get down there. I thought there'd be one final burst of, uh, I thought they might have an early, um, you never know what could happen if there was a story over the week at one little early in the week kind of sell off square up in front of the fed and then possibly do something like they did, but they didn't even wait for anything, right? It wasn't like they're, they, they just kind of came after stocks right away. they, Monday didn't didn't produce the news that could really uh, maybe get sellers going. And it was it was, you know, just a squeeze from that point on. But you have to admit, right, that when you hold on to more than half the gains that you've had to this point, that's a positive for the bulls in my book. And so the fact that they saved some technicals from really worsening and deteriorating in the nick of time didn't allow this to retrace even more, which was probably the natural order of things, quite frankly. And we're able to go this vertical with so many stocks participating. And they really did, and I can't show this, but some of the breadth measures that I have um, on my charts, on some of the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the layouts, you know, they, they showed really serious uh, improvement. And so I'm not, uh, I'm not going to um, tell you that I've been suddenly this, you know, this unabashed bull. I'm not. I'm just saying that I wouldn't discount. Is if this feels bogus and phony to you, and you want to doubt it, you may be right to do so. But if they put in a higher low, if they pull back, put in a higher low, and they start to go through, right? Remember, there's nothing more important to these scoundrels than their end of year bonuses, your money. The performance, you know, they don't, of course they don't, <laughs> a lot of these real, not your local guy or gal that helps you, they of course care. But I mean, the people that actually move the money around, uh, you know, we know what they're, we know what they're all about. So that's what I'm getting at for the bottom line, right? You've got to wait for the, I think, wait for this pullback that I think should come. See if they're able to create what I call a higher, a higher, it's supposed to be higher or low. Uh, base camp from which the gang could use to blow the top off the chocolate factory for the year end celebration. And that would, of course, be in accordance with this third year that we're in. 1A, which is meaning like just as important, you must focus on the price action. No matter what you hear, what tabs I cover to kind of keep people apprised of the risk that's building, what's not really being covered by the media, what Ryan covers, all of it. We do that so that we're apprised and not caught off guard. We don't do that to make a case to be bears or bulls. But we just know from experience that most of the stuff that comes out is always trying to propagandize the upside as much as they can. And so we don't even look for that because it's everywhere, right? What we do look for, though, are things that could catch the market off guard, guard that we don't want to be caught off guard by, right? We want, it, we want to know that. We want to know that there's something looming. Not that we're trading on it for that instant and that instant in time. It's just that if there's a problem brewing somewhere that could turn into something significant, I want to know about that rather than after the market has gotten crushed and I'm wondering what caused it. So that's the whole, that's really the main reason for that. So um, November, November often provides stabilization. We talked about that. They've got, I think, enough skepticism out there still that will help them. Um, we did, I think, see, I, I noted that. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, hanky panky being played in, in various places. And once again, it's probably worse than it's ever been, but that is really the case with every administration. They just take something that's already been deformed um, and deform it uh, even further, you know, where it just becomes further and further uh, untethered from, the old statistics, which were much more, well, you have to go back decades though for to to use the old calculations that weren't as rigged. And this is sort of like, uh, this is sort of like uh, just part of the culture, right? Part of the government culture now to just really rig everything and worry about reality later. And let's face it, the, the scariest thing for a lot of people in this world is the truth. So. People prefer the lie to the truth, as far as I can tell. And 
certainly Wall Street prefers the rosy picture rather than anything else, something that re is reflective of reality, for example. Um, I think a lot of this stuff is worse. Um, I do think the market's still whistling past the graveyard. Um, and I do think that there's people, I saw statistics that more people, there's a record number of people with second and third jobs because of what's happened with inflation. Um, and the fact that their wages are so far behind the inflation jumps. Uh, and so, but what, why I keep saying, but C1A, but C1A, 1A is must focus on price action while not forgetting about risks, right? That's, that's the nut. That is it in a nutshell. You, this, this is really what we have to do all the time. So no matter what you hear from me, from, you know, from Ryan, from Greg, whatever stuff we share, we're not trying to convince anyone to join our sort of this. There's a lot of problems we, we with what what's out there and we're, we're going to fight it. No, we're, we, we're going to just acknowledge that we know about these things, not get caught off guard by them and still trade the price action that's in front of us, knowing, right, that I wouldn't doubt the power of what we just witnessed because um, these guys, they're all about, right, they're all about the Wall Street crowd that really moves the money around is all about Wall Street, not really about, it's, they're not they're not your advisor, right? So on your investments, they're they're a whole different breed. So that's if they get their chance right in the face of everything, they will jam this market into year's end. But I wouldn't get this is the whole thing. I'm not getting too far ahead. Um, I, I can see where if you list, listen only and hear, hear certain things that I say that you might have the wrong impression that I'm suddenly super bullish on the end of the year. I'm not. Not yet. I could become that. I could say, well, look, the odds are favoring them to do what they usually do at the end of most years, what they very much do in the third third year of the presidential election cycle. These are all favoring them to do that, but we're not there yet. So I think you have to be very, uh, very concerned still and wait to see how things play out and just do the best you can, right? I think if they, if they insist on jamming this up in the next session or two without a break, I think that would be a mistake for bulls because then they're going to be a lot closer to overbought on the dailies. And if they get overbought on the dailies that quickly, it makes it hard to stay up there and hold up there. On the on the flip side, which is something that you know they're really rarely known for, which is being patient. If bulls are a little more patient, have a nice little day or two of pullback, and then correct some of these short-term RSIs and take down the daily RSI. They'll bring the resistance line lower, which will effectively become almost like the 100 day where the 100 day is right now. Then they'll be able to get up there without expending a lot of energy, take out these highs that I think are important and even take out resistance. Right. So to me, like that is always a smarter play when you have this super squeeze over the course of three or four sessions is things are so short term overbought. Be smart, pull it back and go. And like I said, we, despite all my reservations about what's really happening, I would be all too happy to see that happen because uh, I would love to see us get a good, strong market to trade into the end of the year. And if you want to see what happens, all you really have to do is see 19 and 2021. Look at what they did. Here is here's October and they start jamming the market right in October, and as opposed to Nov, Nov is volatile. They get into that latter part of the year, the last two weeks, and look at what they did. Right, they jam it up really right to the top for the whole year, for the whole year. Now look what happens afterwards. Right, we were like, what, <laughs> what the, what the hell? I mean, you know what, why it's happening, but you're like, really? And then the whole thing just instantly falls apart right from at the start of 22. So all this, this was all right. A lot of that money that just flowed in, constantly flowed in from the Fed and constantly flowed in from the government. And you get this relentless post COVID low, just relentless ramp. And it was some of the best trading I'd seen, honestly, since the nineties, late nineties, it was tremendous. I hope it comes back. <laughs> it's great for, it's great for us and uh, all the folks that are in the services because we get, usually things are really firing and there's a ton of opportunity. Um, but, you know, again, I'm not sure if they can do that. Here's the other, here's another one. Look at this sort of October through November, 
right? Little hiccup there, uh, little hiccup there um, in um, early December, small pullback there. But just look, Ock all the way through, right, into the new year. Now, they had a little bit more uh, shenanigans go on into uh, 2020. And Ryan and I were running the services like we always have been at Market Rebellion. And we're sitting there talking to people in the webinar saying, this is ridiculous. Like, you know, this, this kind of behavior here is ridiculous. This COVID thing has the chance to spill over and you got to get prepared for this and all that. And then it happened. You know, but the, the market, again, it does a tremendous job of ignoring. Uh, it does a tremendous job of ignoring reality uh, at times. And it, it'll leave you scratching your head. But, not, but you have to be prepared, right? When you start to see the trend get cracked as it did there, and you could even just see the, the orange 50-day uh, getting cracked, it was over. At that point, it's over. So, again, this is why I think this, to me, is why it pays to know what's up out there this is why it pays to do the research or at least you know take what we're able to share and keep it in mind because it gives you this appreciation for the risk uh the risks that uh, in the market you're operating within and that way you know that you might there's a good chance maybe you're on borrowed time and you don't ever get too far out over your over your skis but just to kind of swing around and wrap things up uh, let me just get the, the Q. It's all somewhat similar, maybe with the exception, right, of IWM. So the Qs, again, I lost my line, but the Qs are pretty much right at the line right now, practically. I mean, I think they're pretty much right. I think that is a solid line. So you're really right there. And right now you're not even close to overbought. You're only at 58. But if we go down to an hourly and we check out where that got to, that got to 86, 87 ish, something like that. So again, short term overbought, right? You, you don't see, if we look back over time, you don't see many readings that are higher uh, on the hourly charts here. Remember, you're all the way, I'll try to get it right here. So you're all the way up there. There's nothing that, that goes that gets that extreme, right? So if you want to put this within context, there's nothing for the, from this year on the hourly that's quite at around 87. This is probably the closest that we saw right there on the hourly in early February, and that's 85. And you can see what happened really largely after that. So uh, that doesn't mean like you know, I'm saying the whole next couple of uh, weeks are going to be rough or six weeks are going to. I just mean like you probably do. You probably do for a pullback when you get this short term overbought. But otherwise, really, the QQQ, uh, oops, the QQQ chart, it's a lot like the SPY, right? So we, it's, there's really, I would make the same comments. And since I'm also like struggling with the technology issue, I'm not going to belabor it. But patterns are very similar, right? The pullback from the October through July jam job has been mild, relatively speaking. So you can say what you want, but uh really and i'll cover this more in sector situation but th this is the smh and i did put out really heavy i thought emphasize the warnings of if you trade the short side for a breakdown here be very careful because this is important to, i've covered it in macro too i think because this is very important in my mind in the market and there you go right this is a key sector they had to jam up and that was just a merciless reversal that's what they do and that's why i said be very careful if you're going to, if this looks like it's going to crack and then it doesn't below the 200 day there in dark or medium blue outside of the Bollinger's gap, the whole, everyone sees that these guys are the masters of reversing things right when it looks like it's the easy money to catch this doom scenario. They do exactly what they did there. So please like take that to heart because don't let them uh, get you on that. You've got to realize that trading that gap is you've got a lot of company and uh they'll they'll if you play that game and you overstay your welcome it can be extremely painful extremely quickly so you're right at resistance on the diamonds you could be back above the 100 on the diamonds very quickly that's the red line on this chart and uh that looks pretty good it's actually close to closing above that high so these are the blue chips of course so um, that would be a good sign, probably just like the rest of it, short term overbought. And I'll finally I'll cover IWM and then we'll wrap up because I'm, you know, I'm just 
I'm having a rough one with this without these charts, uh, without my chart layouts. Um, IWM has been the different story. Um, I guess they're going to get euphoric that, you know, rates have backed off half of a uh, point. I don't think in the grand scheme of things, it's a positive thing if rates have peaked and are really going down. And that could be the case, no doubt about that. I, I can't argue that that wouldn't be a great thing. I have said, I think the Fed should stop and at least see what's up with this economy before continuing to jack rates up. So I don't even disagree with that. I'm actually in favor of it. All I'm saying is I'm not so sure going from virtually zero to now only about four and a half or four percent, maybe in, in you know my June is really going to be the tonic to really jam this back up in reality in terms of all of a sudden business is wonderful because rates down ticked a little bit. I don't think that's the case. I don't think the all the balance sheets and income statements improve because of that dramatically because of uh, so, uh, rates ticking down somewhat. Um, maybe a year from now, you're you're uh, a full percentage point lower. Who knows? But uh, you know that's that's not the way that uh, equity bulls think, right? So they're they're going to come after things. But that's right at resistance. Still has its work to do. Um, you got the two hundred and one hundred up there in blue and red. So yeah, I think there's a lot more work there. Uh, I think this is just like everything else. This is short term overbought. Probably if we go to the hourly on this one, it's going to be up there as well. And it got up to, it looks like, right, eight, just under 88. I'm mean, just on, just above 87. So once again, I'll do this, but I don't want to belabor it. Look, I can just keep scrolling back in time, keep keeping my cursor right near 87. And you're looking at all the way back through 2022. And there's nothing that's close to this in terms of an overbought reading on the hourly RSI. So if you want to know how sort of stupid this got, and I don't mean that like in the in the way that I think it it shouldn't have happened. I just mean silly, stupid, overdone, um, relentless, cutthroat, all the things we mentioned last week. That gives you an idea that this is the most overbought on the hourly in the last, uh, what is it at this point? Well, 20, about 22 months, right? So not something that anyone's going to publish on Twitter, but I think something that you should keep your eye on that, look, this is the most overdone it's been. What happens when it gets really overdone? Let's just look at a few examples. Here's one. Oh, look, it went down after that. Here's one. Oh, look, it went down after that. Here's a series of overbought, right, over here. What ended up happening here? Eventually, right, look, there's, there's a real correction in there. This one overbought down, right? Like We could just keep, that's my point, right? The, the point is that when you are late to the party here, Right. Not that we cannot continue to go. There are no rules to say we cannot continue to go. It's just that if you're playing probabilities, you're not going to find a more overbought time. Here's another one lower. Right. Here's another one right here. What happens after that? Lower. Right. So just be careful, because while I do think this could still end up being a big celebration, a big end of year swindle <laughs> for, the, for these guys, as it often is. It's not quite there yet. And I think certainly now this thing has gotten ahead of itself by a lot. So, and the news that's out there is hasn't completely gone away in terms of being a threat. So I think I'm going to end on that note. I'm going to wish everyone uh, a great conclusion to their weekend, a great week ahead. I hope that something I share with you in this video helps you out this week or some week in the future. And uh, just be smart out there and keep things within context, be disciplined. And you can do very well uh, in this market still, even though it is a challenging market. So everyone take care. And thanks again for tuning in.